Wow, honestly, this is so much better than I expected. This is really, really impressive. I mean, I can definitely see how this will appeal to the masses, seriously. This is a glimpse of what the future has to offer. What's going on guys, Sin Prince here and welcome back to my tech review series. Today we're going to take a look at the Razer Kishi gaming controller. And what makes this controller special is that it's been designed to connect directly into your mobile phone, essentially removing that lag and latency you would otherwise get with Bluetooth controllers. It's worth knowing that this is the Android variant of the controller and therefore requires a USB-C connection on your phone. Razer have also made an iPhone version of the controller as well. Now before we move on to the unboxing, let's get the basics out of the way. This review is not sponsored and my aim with these videos as always is to give you my honest impression of the product and let you know whether or not you should go out and spend your hard earned money on this. Ok so Razer has managed to keep this super short and sweet. Essentially we lift the lid of the box and voila, we have our game controller. There's a quick start guide just under the box here but we won't be needing that. There's actually a little sticker here on the front telling us that we can expand the controller around the back. Let's just remove that and get this thing set up. Now getting this controller hooked to your phone is really simple. You essentially pull on these two latches right here and the controller splits apart. Unlike many gamepads that consist of two separate controller halves, the Kishi's halves are connected with this elastic here in the middle. Essentially this means that the controller fits perfectly on each side of your phone. For reference I'm using the OnePlus 7 Pro which is still a large phone by today's standards and I had no issues getting the phone to fit in. Ok so first impressions. This feels like a premium controller and I think I know why. Like all gamepads the Kishi is housed in a plastic body but the final design is heavily inspired by the Xbox controller. The first thing that stands out to me is the asymmetrical design of the analog sticks. If you're used to the PlayStation controller this might be a huge inconvenience. Then there's just the general button placement. X, Y, A and B, again just like the Xbox and colour coded in the same way. There's a home button here and a couple of function buttons which unfortunately cannot be mapped but we'll talk about that later. And of course we have two bumpers and two triggers. The bumpers feel fine, they're nothing special but pressing them down you do get some tactile feedback reassuring you the button has been pressed. The triggers however are a little lightweight, flimsy even. You can clearly tell that you're just pressing down on a spring. Last but not least there's a USB-C port here at the bottom which allows you to charge your phone whilst gaming. So if you're looking to carve out a long gaming session with your mobile, this controller might just be the one for you. So obviously the primary function of the Razer Kishi is to be a gaming controller and I'm happy to report the Kishi is pretty damn fantastic for mobile gaming. Right off the bat Razer has an app dedicated for the controller where you will see a list of compatible games. This means that you can skip button mapping entirely which is really great. However, therein lies its biggest drawback. Some games just aren't compatible with the controller and that includes the likes of Call of Duty Mobile and Fortnite. For many this is a deal breaker and Razer hasn't shared any plans to add in button mapping for the future. So in order to kind of break this down I've decided to look at the different options available to mobile gamers and see how well the Kishi works in those scenarios. So that obviously includes games created directly for mobile. These are games that can be downloaded directly from the app store like Street Fighter and Asphalt 9. But considering how saturated the market has become with game streaming services, I thought it would be a good idea to test this controller with cloud gaming, which in turn acts as a good test for latency. Alright so right now we've booted into Asphalt 9 and honestly straight out of the bat I can tell you this is, uh, this feels really really great, very responsive. Obviously um, right now I'm playing a mobile game and the controller is hooked directly to the mobile. So there's basically no latency present at all, I can't feel it in the slightest. And honestly right now this feels fantastic just moving this right analog stick around. You can see how responsive it is. Alright so right now I'm in Asphalt 9 uh, and I'm just testing out the controller and wow it's very responsive. The, the issue with this game is it's not really utilising any of the analog sticks which is really silly. In a way it just makes you make a decision but that's nothing special. Anyways, let's, uh, let's see if we can win this race. But like I said, it's very, very responsive. Very, very responsive. It's almost ridiculous. Like you can see how, how great this feels, man. It, it, it's pretty fantastic. And like I said, absolutely no latency. Zero. 
yeah, that was pretty great. So let's try out something else. Uh, let's move over to Street Fire and see how that does. So right now we've booted into Street Fire, uh, and the one thing annoying about mobile gaming is that, well, you can't really utilize the analog sticks in some instances. So like with Street Fire, I'll have to use the touch, touch controls to select my character. But once I'm in game, it's absolutely fine to use the analog stick. It's just kind of hard to register the inputs. Not bad. Oh, okay. And um, oh, I wanted to try the focus dash out there, but we'll try it next time. All right. So right now I'm trying out a first person shooter called Zombie Trigger. Um, and look, it's just so responsive. Something's going. This is one of the games that was recommended directly for the Razer Kishi through the app. Okay, so I think we get the picture. Uh, games that run on the Razer Kishi and are supported run fantastic. Um, obviously, like I said, there's no lag. Look, I'm just I'm managing to just get all the shots off that I possibly need. Um, it's very easy with this, uh, with the controller. It's pretty fantastic. All right, let's move on to cloud gaming. So here I am running Ori and the Will of the Wisps. This is running directly from the cloud, so it's being streamed to my phone. And in all honesty, this is very playable. There's definitely some latency present, but for console gaming on the go, this is impressive. Now it's also worth knowing that I'm running this directly off a 5 GHz Wi-Fi signal, and I have pretty good internet, so your experience may differ from mine, but like I said, I'm managing to play the game just fine with no issues. I also tried out a ton of other games including Destiny 2, Wolfenstein Youngblood, and Forza Horizon 4, and found that my experience was the same across all the games. A little bit of latency, but the end experience was great. And again, I should emphasize that the latency present isn't coming from the gamepad, as it's hooked directly into the phone. Xbox also offers its players the ability to stream directly from your console, as opposed to using Microsoft's dedicated cloud servers. And here's where I noticed a massive boost in my overall playing experience. You see, my console is hooked directly into my local network, so it's able to utilize the bandwidth to its fullest. And the most impressive thing is that there's hardly any latency here. Pressing down on a button is almost immediately registered on the screen. It's very satisfying and the experience is fantastic. And to just give you a quick snippet of my experience, check out this demo of Destiny 2 via Remote Play. Wow, that's very cool and insane. All in all, I think the Razer Kishi is a great gaming controller, but is it worth the asking price? Well, the Kishi is currently retailing for £80 on Amazon, which is actually the cheapest I've seen it since release. And whether or not that seems like a fair price depends on how much you game on your phone. If you take a look at the competition, and there isn't much, it is possible to pick up something like GameSir X2, which also offers a direct USB-C connection to your phone, and in many ways looks very similar to the Kishi aside from being white. However, when I looked at some of the reviews for the game, sir, many noted that it doesn't feel as sturdy as the Kishi and also detaches from the side of the phone a lot. There are cheaper alternatives, but that means resorting to Bluetooth controllers, which will obviously increase the overall latency. There are some other drawbacks to the Kishi other than price. If you're a PlayStation user, you might find it hard to adjust to the asymmetrical analogs and the button placement. Then there's the lack of support for button mapping, However, with all that said, and keeping in mind I am speaking about my own personal experience here, I really love this product. As a father of two now, who aside from doing YouTube has a full time job, I get a lot less time in the day, scratch that, the week to play games. The games that I do play with friends usually involves multiplayer, so I miss out on a lot of story driven campaigns. But since having the Kishi, that's no longer the case. Now I can take my gaming on the go. The Kishi has a great design, it's compact and lightweight so it's easy to chuck into my travel bag, it mimics the style of the Xbox controller which is my go-to for gaming, it's quick and easy to set up, it can house almost every phone in the market today with a few exceptions, there's no latency from the controller itself due to the direct input and it works really well with cloud gaming. If I could sum this up, the Kishi essentially elevates your everyday phone into a makeshift Nintendo Switch. Okay guys, that was my review of the Razer Kishi. If you have any unanswered questions about the product, then sound off in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter. I'd appreciate a like and a sub, be safe, and I'll catch you all on the next video.